The city of Hazleton has fined one of its own emergency departments, and it's our top story tonight. Good evening. This is WYLN's Late Edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for Tuesday, June 17, 2014. I'm Ann Gownley. The city of Hazleton has fined one of its fire departments for failing to pay a business license fee. Now the company's president and chief is demanding answers. According to its president, the Diamond Fire Company, located on Church Street in Hazleton, has not had a fine from the city in its 124-year history. Now with a citation, which was delivered Monday afternoon, Diamond Fire Company Chief John Paletsky is demanding answers. We were quite surprised yesterday when we were issued a citation by the district magistrate's office for non-payment of a city business license. Uh, as a volunteer fire company within the city, uh, we do pay certain fees such as our gaming license and so forth to stay legal uh, since we do have raffles and fundraisers. But uh, we've never ever paid uh, this type of fee or been taken to a magistrate over a fee uh, for being volunteer firefighters within the city of Hazleton. Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi says it was all just two separate misunderstandings. One, uh, we sent them a bill, they misunderstand what it, understood what it was. We give them a business license and we exonerate them from paying it. We do a health inspection because they have a kitchen and we exonerate them from that. Uh, this is for the electronic games. It's a $50 bill. For some reason, they didn't pay it. Uh, it was in a pile of uh, bills that were unpaid in the uh, clerk's office down, down there in code and they sent it up to the magistrate and the magistrate sent out this uh, uh, citation to them. We feel that as a volunteer company within the city of Hazleton, uh, we pay the necessary fees uh, that pertain to, uh, as I said before, our uh, fundraising, but this type of fee was never charged to us. So we feel we should not have to pay this being an organization within the city of Hazleton, uh, especially since we uh, provide the city with uh, so much free services. Paletsky says the company has been helping out the city for the past several years and getting this citation from the magistrate's office is a slap in the face. In the last 10 years we have uh, devoted uh, portions of our state funds, our fundraising money, and funds that we raise to help the city maintain the building. We placed a new roof, uh, refinished the front, new heating system, lighting in the engine bay, uh, painting, electrical work, and so forth. And this year we are spending a portion of our $13,000 state grant to help upgrade the interior of the building to better uh, make it better fuel efficient so it will be a, a less of a burden on the taxpayers. Inuzi says from the beginning if the company would have came to the city everything would have been straightened out instead of them receiving a citation from the magistrate. We have uh, contacted uh, Magistrate Zola's office and we've told them to pull this uh, citation out and uh, if they've paid this $50 in the past they should pay it now. The citation gave the company 10 days to respond with either a guilty or not guilty plea. Paletsky says the company was going to plead not guilty. Inuzi says when the company pays the $50 fine for its electronic gaming license, it will quote, all be over. Parking, overriding of veto, and concerns over the audit of the city were all discussed at tonight's city council meeting. Our Gary Perna was there and has the story. Parking, parking, parking. That was the biggest discussion at tonight's Hazleton City Council meeting. City Council passed a resolution allowing an agreement between the Hazleton Parking Authority and DHD Realty Holding LLC. Council President Jack Mundy said he is hoping that this will bring more people into the downtown. Just want to thank uh, the D'Angelo brothers, uh, the D'Angelo family and the Hayden family for believing in Hazleton. Uh, the Hayden family uh, years ago uh, developed the Marco building which uh, myself and Richard Amen, uh, while, while members of the industrial authority helped save that building and now it's going to be the cornerstone of maybe the rebuilding of downtown Hazleton and I want to congratulate uh, the D'Angelo's and wish them well in their endeavor. I mean this is one small part of it the uh, parking and hopefully this uh, this will help them uh, move move forward with their plans to move their headquarters in downtown Hazleton. In the agreement DHD will keep 25 percent of the parking spaces available for the public to use. 
Council did not take any action on hiring an auditing firm to handle the city's audits. Probably be doing that shortly. Uh, I uh, one of the president, uh, one of the auditing companies came here and uh, made a presentation, and so did our local uh, our local auditor. Uh, one of the uh, auditors that presented is <clears throat> almost 10,000 uh, less than uh, the other audit that who's been doing it. That's something we have to consider. Uh, uh, we probably will be making a uh, decision shortly, and we have assurances from both of them that they will get the work done in time. By a vote of 5 to 0, council voted to override the mayor's veto on the parking ordinance that was brought up by Councilman Jeff Cassant. That's going to go into effect, and, uh, and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback that, that people like uh, to be able to uh, set aside parking for their customers by paying a fee. I mean, that's done in other cities, and it seems to work, and, and we think that's uh, going to be a positive for the city. The mayor uh, made his objections, and Jeff went over them and noted that they, were, uh, they weren't valid, all of them. And uh, we think that uh, allowing businesses to buy spots for their customers is a good idea. The next city council meeting is slated for July 15th at 6 p.m. In Hazleton, for WILN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Parna. The Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce is once again planning their big summer farmer's market. The event that was usually held on Saturday mornings is now being moved to Fridays. Starting on Friday, July 11th at 10 a.m., the farmer's market will be located in downtown Hazleton near the former Security Savings Building across from its original location on West Broad Street. President of the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce, Mary Malone, says that since the day of the, the market has changed, more vendors are in line to participate. If you're a vendor and you're interested, go on to the Chamber website at www.hazeltonchamber.org for a vendor application or call the Chamber office at 455-1509 to get a hold of an application and get more information. The market will feature fresh produce and live entertainment. Uh, and we're really excited about the chance on, on a Friday for folks who are working in the downtown area to come out at lunchtime, enjoy some of the vendors, buy some of that fresh produce, and take it home. So that's from July 11th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, the market will be held on Friday starting on July 11th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. A worker fell from a roof at 17th and James Street in Hazleton this morning. The man, who was a licensed and insured contractor, fell 30 feet when a roof jack step board broke before he was strapped into his harness. City fire crews arrived at the scene to help Medic 11 with the traumatic injury. The man was taken to the hospital for treatment. A man wearing winter attire walked into the Turkey Hill on Cary Avenue around 3 a.m. Tuesday. Two Wilkes-Barre officers on vigilant patrol spotted him and sensed that something wasn't right considering the weather was hot and humid. They approached him and said that he was allegedly had a gun in his hand. 21-year-old Louis Santana of Wilkes-Barre was then taken into custody. He was charged with two counts of robbery, one count of aggravated assault, and possessing instruments of crime. He was arraigned by District Judge Paul Roberts and jailed at the Luzerne County Prison for lack of $50,000 bail. A Kingston man was charged for his role in a shooting that occurred on Monday morning. 38-year-old Travis Jones allegedly shot Ransom Clark in the back during an argument on Penn Street around 6 a.m. Officers on the scene noticed bloody footprints that led to Jones sitting on a side porch. Police questioned him and Jones admitted shooting Clark but said that the gun went off by accident. George Jones was charged with two counts of aggravated assault, two counts of possession of a prohibited firearm, among other charges. He was arraigned today before Magisterial District Judge Paul Roberts and was jailed at Luzerne County Prison for lack of $75,000 bail. The trial is now underway in a fatal hit-and-run accident that took place in August 2008 in Kingston. 29-year-old Megan Pankowitz is charged with the felony count of leaving the scene of an accident. 32-year-old Sharon Shaughnessy died as a result of the incident. Pankowitz admitted to going home after leaving the scene. Her father, Robert Pankowitz, is her lead defense attorney. He stated that she left the scene in a state of shock and reported the incident to police 11 hours later. The case is being heard as a bench trial before Senator 
Delaware County Senior Judge Charles Brown. The trial is expected to last until Wednesday. Pankowitz is also expected to testify in her defense. The charge against her carries a one-year mandatory prison sentence. The Hazleton City Authority will be replacing more than 15,000 water meters throughout the area. The HCA will use a loan of just over $4 million from the Pennsylvania Infrastructure and Investment Authority to fund the project. The authority will provide notices to water customers in their next bills regarding their plans. Contractors from Keystone Utility Systems will need 10 to 15 minutes to install the new meters at most residential properties and 30 minutes for commercial properties. The project will be completed in 18 to 24 months with no cost to property owners. Customers will be able to schedule an appointment using the contact information provided in letters that they will receive from Keystone Utility Systems. With increased programming costs and advances in technology, Service Electric is raising some of its prices for services, according to General Manager Tim Trentley. Trentley says increased bandwidth is needed to accommodate the technology advances. He also encourages customers to call Service Electric to see how they can save money. For customers with classic cable, your bill will increase $1. For the variety tier channels, which is channels 100 to 149, it will, merely, it will increase by $3.50 a month. Phone service, digital converter rentals, and digital phone service will remain the same. Anyone with questions may call their office in the Humboldt Industrial Park at 570-454-3841. The River Commons in Wilkes-Barre will be bustling with outdoor enthusiasts this upcoming weekend. Our Julie Stefanovic has the details on what to expect at the 2014 Riverfest. Organizers are gearing up for the 18th annual Wyoming Valley Riverfest. The event was established to promote environmental education and advocacy. It is a three-day festival which takes place at the Nesbitt Park in the River Commons. Participants can kayak, relax, and fish on the Susquehanna River. We spoke with Executive Director of the Riverfront Parks Committee, John Mady, who attributes the success of the event to three main components. The first would be the, the, uh, the public that comes to attend. Without that, we could put on the best event, but if no one comes, what's the point? Number two are the volunteers that come. I mean, the volunteers that we re recruit. We could not do this without these dedicated, loyal volunteers. We will have over the weekend a 100 plus volunteers and also our sponsors that help support this, whether it's financially or in kind. Without those three elements, without those three components, we might as well not even do this. One of the biggest highlights of the Riverfest is a dragon boat race that runs from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. on Sunday. An ancient Chinese tradition of awakening the dragon takes place on Friday evening. We will be conducting the Awaken the Dragon ceremony, and uh, this tradition goes back thousands of years to China. When they arrive here on Friday night, we have to awaken those dragons. So the way that works is they, uh, the, the process is simply to dot the eye, paint the center of the eye black, which awakens the dragon. And we will use some, some children from the Wilkesburg Dance Studio who will parade down in their own makeshift dragon costume. They will parade and they will welcome their fellow dragons. The event is free of charge and includes environmental exhibits, food vendors, pony rides, and live music. The kickoff takes place on Friday, June 20th, where WYLN will be broadcasting live from 5 until 8 p.m. Visitors are welcome to come out on Saturday from noon until 5 p.m. and Sunday from 10 until 3 p.m. In Wilkes-Barre, reporting for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Well, school is out, the weather is hot, and many pools are open for business. Today, with temperatures reaching 90 degrees and humidity levels up, WYLN stopped by a local pool where those young and old were trying to escape the heat. The George Ernst Memorial Pool in Cunningham is open for business with several area children and adults hitting the water to try to beat the heat. Kyle Steiner is a lifeguard at the pool, and he tells us that the pool has been packed since school let out last week. Yesterday and today, the first two days of summer, finally, kids get out of school. They can finally enjoy summer break here at the pool. I think yesterday we were packed. We were over stuff. We had lines in the diving boards, lines out for the concession stand. Everybody's trying to cool off. How can you be coming to the pool? The pool is open seven days a week from 11.30 a.m. to 8 o'clock at night. We spoke with children at the pool who couldn't wait to get in the water and have fun with all of their friends. I, I actually like it. It's really fun, and um, when you get in the pool, it's a little bit cold, and when you like stay in, it gets really warm. The favorite part of the pool um, is the diving. It's really, really fun to dive off of the diving board.